Trifilament is a basis of achieving stable printing processes and reducing rework to a minimum. Garbage during printing is also minimized. String is a thing of the past. Today I will show you my development process for a self-building dry box that costs less than 100 euro and contains more than 6 filament spools. My name is Edgar Vorbauer and welcome to my engineering channel. Everyone in printing knows it. You want to quickly start a new project in your perfect color and you either have a wet filament or a table full of torn filament spools. And even if you have a dry box, like me, you can only fit two to four spools in it. In my search for a solution, I came across various possibilities. One of the most interesting videos came from CNC Kitchen. But since the technology shown in the video is quite expensive and relatively inaccessible, I wanted to build something simpler. It should be similar to my previous filament drying box from Ibis Silops. That's why I want to convert this drying box first, so that it might be possible to place different containers on the heating dryer, similar to the new principle of the Polymaker drying box. I wanted a specific closure that closes the box as airtight as possible, but can also be opened with one hand. Other requirements for the drying box were that it should be as well isolated as possible when the filament is dried with heat. Of course, there are also other drying options, such as removing moisture as in an air conditioning system. I also tested this in a setup. But as these usually cannot reduce the humidity below 10%, Using a petit element, I repeatedly reduce the temperature until the water from the air condenses on an aluminium element and then let it warm up again to the room temperature. After a short time, it was possible to collect the first water and remove it from the air. There are also alternative systems such as flow through systems from this video here. This simply does not work because the plastic can never be dehumidified down to the core in such a short cycle time. Then there is the option of the never popular silica gel. But so far I have found silica beads more difficult than practical. In addition, it is much more efficient to dry the filament directly instead of having an intermediate stage in the drying process, which always costs time during preparation. That left only direct heat drying as the best option for me. Ok, let's come back to my first idea, which was actually to build a kind of tower from several separate OXO boxes. Unfortunately, it turned out that these did not have the right lid and the box size, why this idea was later discarded. Nevertheless, I was very interesting to take the OXO lid apart and examine the closing mechanism. A cool mechanism for an airtight opening and closing but unfortunately unsuitable for me due to its size. I stuck to my plan and wanted to build a new type of drying box for the filament dryer I have been using up to now. However, in order to be able to collect comparative values, I first needed a way of measuring the moisture in filaments and also the isolating capacity of a closed container. I first wanted to determine the isolating capacity using the power required to keep the container on a constant temperature. However, I later did this using the change in temperature over the time. To this, I heated my previous drying box up to 50 degrees when it's empty and then turned off the heat supply and saw how the temperature adjusts over the time. Since the iPods is a very open dryer with many holes etc, I want to insulate it in the furniture cross and first rub it insulation around the drying chamber to test it. This helped a little as you can see in the table here. But as there is always two, two types of heat transport, for example heat conduction and heat radiation, and I only tried to prevent one of them. So for the heat conduction, I also had the idea to preventing the heat radiation. To this, I simply coated the box with an adhesive that remains sticky to the touch like adhesive tape. I then applied aluminium foil. It 
Again, I recorded the time of temperature curve. The room temperature fluctuated by around 2 degrees, but always remained constant. Okay, I was also about to carry out the test with the aluminum foil when suddenly there was a bang and the fuse blew. Apparently, some of my aluminum foil got into the heating element underneath and caused a short circuit. Well, now the drying box is apparently broken, you can take it apart. I was really shocked when I realized that the heating element is operating with 230 volts without a fail safe. This means that if is there any problem with the temperature sensor and the heating element continues heat, oh, I don't even want to imagine the scenarios. In the end I was glad that the filament box no longer worked simply for the safety reasons. However, I could not longer pursue the previous plan and I need a solution quickly. I looked for an insulated food box, a 12 volt heating element with a fan, a temperature control board and a power supply. I started to design something myself in CAD after some milling and branding. The first things could be tested and later installed. The insulation box does a good job of preventing heat conduction but not heat radiation, which is why an other aluminum duct was installed here. The electronics and the milled parts were then installed. There are now two holes in the bottom of the insulated box, one that draws in the cold air from outside and one where the warm air can escape. In total the fan heats 75% of the circulating air inside of the box and the other part is drawn in from outside as fresh air and then heated. This results in less moisture removal than with the iBoss but not as much energy consumed because 75% of the inside air is reheated and not 100% of the outside air as with the iBoss. The measurement values didn't look at bad either. After more than two months of regular using we have gained some insights. I have been found that if you have dried the filament once and only heat the drying box for one hour every two days, the humidity level is maintained. This means that there is a little exchange with more humid outside air when the switch is off. However, structural problems have also arisen. I had to fix the retaining plate again separately with the cable ties. I also thought I was being clever and using extra wood for the hook in the back, but the adhesive in the glued wood panels doesn't withstand the 50 degrees permanently. That's why I had glued it again. It turned out that the drying worked really well. A roll of nylon was dried, weighted again and again. The results here was also a significant weight reduction. Okay. In the end I would like to quickly list the disadvantages and advantages of the system. The disadvantages are no viewing window, a relatively loud fan, relatively large, the doors do not open very quickly. But there are also positive sides. Dry and throw more than 6 filament rules, keeps relatively tight even after drying, very energy efficient, reasonably prices, hoses can be laid, very flexible. Electricity consumption is approximately 0.8 kW per hour per day on with either is also left running overnight. Everything is working off on 12 walls. Now over the 8 weeks that I implemented and tested the project, many things were changed again and I had to be reconsidered. But that's the way it is with engineering. There is always a solution first and then there is always a better one.